Now, Rupert, uh, ultimately, the biggest questions lie in the field of metaphysics. The What is the ultimate nature of reality? Um, why is there something rather than nothing? What is the nature of consciousness? Um, and then kind of science and spirituality basically do their best to understand that. That's ultimately what we're here doing is trying to understand that. And a good way to you've you've said this question before a good way to begin your atma vichara self inquiry is by asking the question what is my source where do i come from uh what is the what is the genesis of 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 all of this um what is my real nature and yeah. You had a really good conversation with Sam Harris as well, because I think it was a, a good way to juxtapose the consciousness only with someone that is also interested in um, spirituality, but also has a grounding in uh, deep science and uh, materialism. And so he kind of said in return that there's a big temptation to make consciousness the very first principle. And that um, he, he then said that that would mean that consciousness then subsumes uh, cosmogony, the Big Bang, and the reasons for that. Um, but then you counter with the question, what is it that knows or is aware of your experience? Yeah, well, I, I think there's, there's good reason for making consciousness the first principle simply because it is the first principle of our experience. So <laughs> why not start there? It's just an undeniable fact of experience that consciousness, that all that is or could ever be known is experience. And consciousness is the fundamental and primary re prerequisite of all experience. So if we want to build a model of reality, why not start there? It is the primary element of our experience. So it isn't that scientific just to start with something that is actually experienced, something that is real in experience, rather than starting with an abstract idea, namely the existence of something called matter outside and independent of consciousness, which nobody has ever found or could ever find or will ever find because all it is ever possible to find is the content of consciousness. That to me is abstract. What, 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 what to me is really um, realistic and scientific is to investigate experience, what, ask ourselves what is the primary element of experience, which is obviously consciousness, and it, to, to build our model of reality based on that rather than on something that is abstract okay so the the take is that the most the ground or the most fundamental first principle is experience and then that is consciousness that is awareness and then that is the nature of reality is that is consciousness is awareness and not that there is a big bang that happens 13.8 billion years ago and after the billions of years of evolution of matter then the complexity of body activity creates a consciousness that is is there is there a point of any <laughs> synthesis there or that, that model of so, sorry sorry to yeah interrupt you that, that, that model of reality is based on the evidence of thought and perception. It, it, it presumes that what we perceive of the outside world is, is, is real in the way that it is presented to our senses and that thought's interpretation of sense perception is correct and extrapolated from this model of reality we go all the way back to the Big Bang, but th this is this idea is based on the presumption that perception and its interpretation through thought is correct. 
Okay. Okay. But it might not be. Maybe our senses don't. Yeah. Maybe the a combination of perception and conception, that is the finite mind, maybe they don't give us an accurate model of reality. Maybe reality is filtered through sense perception and appears in accordance with its limitations. In other words, the limitations that we see, that we believe pertain to reality, may simply be the limitations of the perceiving apparatus, the finite mind, through which we perceive. We cannot be sure that the limitations that belong to our yeah. perceiving apparatus yes. actually pertain to reality itself. How do we know that we are not simply seeing a, an objectification or a reification of the limitations of our own mind? Yes, yes. And after all, when the activities of thought and perception subside, as they do in deep sleep, time and space also subside. When thought and perception begins again, when thought begins again, time seems to begin. When perception begins again, space seems to begin. And this happens every, every single time thought and perception disappear objective experience disappears every time it arises again objective experience arises again is that a coincidence could there be a connection between yeah. the two i would suggest that there is and these are those hints that we were mentioning earlier these most uh simple hints in science there's occam's razor the most simplest is likely correct and in this case, it's so, in a sense, simple, and it is so, it's so much like a hint. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. I, I, I liked your analogy, your, 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 your summary at the beginning about the dream. Uh, we are given numerous hints as to the nature of reality. And if, as you say, we use Occam's razor, Occam said that of, of two competing theories, we should always choose the one that makes the least assumptions. So here we have two models of reality. One, that all reality appears within consciousness and is the activity of consciousness. That doesn't make an assumption, it is actually our experience. The second assumption is that what we, what we know of reality is generated by something outside consciousness namely matter, and indeed gives rise to consciousness. In other words, it, the, the second theory suggests that that which is never experienced, namely matter, independent of consciousness, gives rise to that which is alone experienced, namely consciousness. So this, this makes uh, uh, an enormous assumption, the assumption of the existence of something outside consciousness. Well, if it was necessary to appeal to the existence of something called matter in order to explain our experience, then it would be legitimate under Occam's razor to, to, to refer to such a substance. But it is quite possible to make sense of our entire experience of reality, referring only to consciousness in the way that you suggested with the dream analogy. And it, 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 this consciousness only model also not only enables us to make sense of our experience of reality, but it enables us to make sense of many phenomena that the matter model does not, is not able to explain. So the consciousness only model has a far greater explanatory power than the matter model. If we were to visualize the Ouroboros, the, the snake's head eating its tail, if we were to envision the wholeness um, of that, then is then the, the infinite consciousness is then present at the, oh, it's present everywhere, but it's present at the Godhead and the tail in the sense that the tail portion, this model of science that currently um, is that many of us agree to and in consensus enjoy the benefits of is at 
the the tail point infinite consciousness is at the tail point and the big bang is the process of the tail point itself still evolving over time into what we have so there is still that process and and it's going towards a telos of a godhead of the continuation is that approximately how 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 do you resonate with that I think the the model of um of the Big Bang is is a um, a model that is accurate or reasonably accurate within the parameters of sense perception and, and thought. It it is an interpretation of reality within the limits of perception and, and conception, and is, is as such a, a reasonable uh, interpretation and has, uh, is, is, is a useful interpretation. I'm not suggesting that, um, I, I love science. I have numerous um, scientist friends. I have great respect for, for, for what they do. It, it's a valid interpretation and can be- Hydrocarbons used. have literally made us what we are really uh, yeah. yes so yeah. so it, it's a it, it's a valid relative model of reality that that is useful has numerous useful applications but it is not an accurate model of reality and th th there are no accurate models of reality even the the consciousness only model that i am suggesting it, it is falls short that, that, that there are no accurate models Interesting. And that's the idea of the elusiveness of the mystery and the beauty of that and to continue op openly and blissfully in complete honor of that mystery while while simultaneously being interested in the models in making and playing with models that can help us live better lives. Yes. Okay.